Hey, anyway. We all that. Listen. Welcome to the Big Talk Podcast. That's how I'm saying it off today. Because today we are traveling to Brazil. We're traveling to Brazil. We're going to talk to a lady. She's an activist in her own right. She's a journalist. She's a friend. She's living in Brazil. So we're going to ask a few questions and we're going to get into it just like that. How are you today? How's things going, ma'am? How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Fine, thanks. Okay, good to hear. So... A lot of people haven't been to Brazil. A lot of people see Brazil through the TV screen. A lot of people see the Brazil through the media, but they haven't actually been. Um, what's your take on Brazil? Like, how long have you been living in Brazil? Um, well, I'm born in here, so um, I live all my life in Brazil. Okay, which part of Brazil do you live in? Uh, I live in Rio de Janeiro. Um... Yeah, in Rocinha, this is a favela in Rio. It's one of of uh, a lot of favelas here. Yeah. You know, I was doing some research on the favelas in Rio. And there is 1,000 favelas in Rio. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And there's 1,000... 600 in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. That is a lot. Yes. And also, I was researching the... So, Hosinha, that's mm -hmm. the biggest favela in uh, Latin America, right? Yeah. It is. Hosinha, just to give the people a bit of a um, comparison, it is this... It is... So, London... Mm. Is three eight eight point four zero zero acres, mm -hmm. and Hosinha is three. Wait, let me get the Hosinha is three five five point one four acres. Yes, it's big. That's crazy. <laughs> It's really like, thick. <laughs> and that's all favela. Like that is all that's crazy. That that's that's a massive place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh we we say that Hosinha is a city inside a city of huge Janeiro. Exactly. Because you know, it's so big and have everything that you need, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then what how is how is life in your favela, Hosinha? Like how is it growing up? Well like, how did life start for you? Well, for me is um it's really hard to to explain because you know, have some there's so so many things happened here. Um Yeah. Like we we are we have problems with extra tool. Um sometimes we don't have water or light or you know, sometimes yeah. shorting police and the traffic is so hard, you know. Yeah. But uh at the same time is it's really it's a really good experience to me to living you know it's like um how can i say that it's really um um it's like opportunity to live every day here and learn many things yeah. you know this is um um almost not almost all but a big part of uh her singer is from um sierra or or from um, Paraíba is the northwest from Brazil, and yeah. you can you can see this culture here. At the same time, yeah, and with uh like um with uh different music, you know, different songs, yeah. different uh, dancing or accent, but at the same time you can see like the. Um, the second generation that born in here, so 
they are carioca, yeah. you know, they born it in Rio de Janeiro. So, um, and yeah. the funky, um, uh, uh, the song. Well, is this some, um, so, because I know there was, you got, uh, there's a lot of uh, West African, that's like the original, like when the, a lot of, there was a lot of like slave trade happening from, into Brazil from like Portugal. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and, but and you got a lot of people. Yes, it was um. How, say that oh, from Porto? like West Africa. To yes. Start with. Yes, was the first. Uh, was the first. Um, uh, how, first uh, city, not city, but. Yeah. Principal. <laughs> The capital. Yeah, the first, <laughs> the first capital. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was the first capital, cause you know was the was really, um, for Portuguese was um really yeah. beautiful and different and you know, a lot thing to do here and, uh, and to explore too. I remember. So. Yeah, like talking about music, I remember, reading about. So the slave trade, I remember reading that even some of the slaves would, to keep their spirits high, they, and to obviously their rhythmic people, they would dance capoeira, the martial art. Capoeira. But it's... The capoeira. Okay, how do you pronounce it? Capoeira. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that... Practiced. Yeah, the first time, like... Uh, this um this is now is a sport right before was uh dancing and before was they could not dance because you know they could not they could do nothing because Couldn't they were themselves. slaves yeah. you know but the things that they could do like um without no one see is sing the music and dance the capoeira so yeah this um represent like um yeah that's so interesting um, all the black population here you know this really yeah that's interesting really man hard. how they use dance yeah they use dance as a martial art yeah it's crazy mm-hmm. and then so in the favelas, I've heard that you have pacified favelas and you have unpacified favelas. Yes, we have. Was Hosinia a pacified? Was it unpacified at a time? Correct. <laughs> Is, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, no. It's like was unpacified. So and the police came and pacified everything. But you know. To do that, you need a yeah, good so, uh, extra tool. So we don't have that from the government on everything. So it didn't work. Uh, and now it's pacified. Is, is Hosinia pacified? Yeah, but no. You understand? It's complicated. Yeah. It's, yeah, for the camera, for the median, it's, yeah, it's pacified. But if you so see, the, if you walk here, you pacified. can see, yeah. If you walk here, you can see it's not pacified. You can, you can see um, uh, the traffic dealer with guns here so easily, you know, and so it's so so it's pacified on paper, but in reality, the benefits of having a pacified favela, yeah, is not apparent. Like no, it doesn't work. <laughs> the government should be doing more. Yeah, yeah, should be. And so, so, so other other favelas that are not pacified at all. Um, Have you been to a favela that is no pacified, not pacified at all? Uh, not actually, but uh, there there are a lot unpacified now. But it's the same. What is that type? What is that lifestyle like? How is that? No, it's the same situation. It's the same. It's like when you're in the favela, it's the same situation, you know. But only uh, the dif uh, the only difference I think is um, 
in the unpacified favela, uh, the traffic, the um, different gangs can fight yeah. there like easily, you know, uh, yeah. because um, the pacified favela it's more in um, so, um, south zone in Rio. This is mean. This is the okay. rich part of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, okay, was so only, they want to protect the rich. Yeah, it was only for the World Cup or Olympiadas or, you know, only for that. That's why they did that. So, um, this means really only to media, see, and only to paper. It's only because... Here they put a little bit of money because have rich people here, you know. So in the another part of Rio de Janeiro, it's unpacified and is they don't really really care. Like it's uh for forgotten, you know. It's like no one care about that area. Yeah. So just to let the people know, so when a favela, so a favela is a is basically a ghetto, a place is yeah. a place where people are living below the poverty line. Yeah, yeah. So when a, let me explain to the people what a favela is and what pacified and unpacified is. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so the the favela. Go ahead. Normally, is different from ghetto or slum. Um, oh really? The favela is different to the slum. Yeah, it's different. I I think it's just only uh because the Easter tour. Um, <clears throat> we had the house in the um, in the um, back. Um, <laughs> in the it's like it's up, you know. It's like you. It's not a plain area. No, say again, sorry. A plain area is is not um ah okay. Um in the favela in favela is a hill. Yeah. Is a hill. Okay. So okay, yeah. They go up for so up, up, up. And Okay. It's I think this is different and the exitude of the house also. The house here um normally is small and yeah. is side inside the another house. So it's really okay. it's really close. So you can hear you can you, you can hear people talking the next door. You know, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Okay, well just to go on. And I think this is the Okay. Principal uh, difference is more about the issue too. Okay, it's more about the structure of the of the, the house or the flat structure yeah. or the apartment. Yeah. So it's more about the okay. So okay, understood. Okay. So in the favela, just to let people know, you yeah. have pacified favelas, you have unpacified favelas. Okay. Pacified favelas, the government are supposed to take over the favela and create a safe environment for the community mm -hmm. and they are meant to police the area long story short they're meant to police the area mm -hmm. and make sure obviously there's no wrongdoings going on no one's getting robbed all your normal types of scenarios that every community should have um unpacified favelas are lawless favelas so to speak uh the people that live in the favela they are the people that police the favela mm -hmm. so it's like their own community they create the laws they create the codes of conduct they they make sure x y and z is not happening or they make sure x y and z is happening they usually create barricades so people can't get in to the favela unless you have a pass or unless you know someone or you live there basically. Yeah. Um I remember Hosinia was unpacified at a time, right? Yes. 
So what was it like when it was unpacified in Hosinia? Uh, for I cannot say for all the uh, people that live here, but uh, for me, it was better because um, we, okay, uh, they make um, them rooms inside the favelas, the favela. Um, so uh, when the police came, was a uh, mess up, you know, like we don't have more these rules, like good for the people that uh, live here. And after there was like more danger. Because really? it's not so the police created more danger. Yeah, because not more only the gangster fighting and shooting themselves. It's okay, now they were the different gangster gang gangster and now the police yeah. too. And the police oh, just okay. came so two... here. Yeah, and the police just came inside the favela to kill. They learned to kill men. Normally okay. they are black men. So oh, oh kill children. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah. So they just um that's sad. look someone and shot because they uh they don't know they are black or they yeah, suppose they don't know who in that person his is. head they just shoot yeah they suppose in his head that it's okay. a trafficking deal but before 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 it was there was no need for i guess for the gangs to shoot there was no opposition no no it's not it's, there was no one you know yeah Hosea, to try and kill them so there was less shooting yeah yeah Hosea always was like the bigger so and had a good money here, good money. So a lot of gangster want her seeing. Uh, I remember, I remember. I don't know if you've seen this film. There was a film, yeah. City of God. Have you seen that? Yeah, Cidade de Deus. Yeah, yeah. Where was that? Was that like a famous film for Brazilians, like the City of God? Where was that um, film? Do you know? Yeah, in the favela Cidade de Deus. Have you been? Uh, no, never. Never have been there. Mm, that was interesting, like, that journalist. I remember that journalist. He always sticks in my mind. Mm-hmm. You remember the guy with the camera? Yeah. So before, for us, was was more, was safer than now. Now we don't know what will yeah. happen, you know. What is next? Yeah. You don't know. We never know. Okay. Cool. And um, so at the moment, obviously COVID-19, how has that been affecting the favela? How has that been affecting where you live? Um, your family? How has COVID? Well, here is really hard because, you know, um, the people are talking about the state stay home you know be safe stay home and in favela i told the house um are really small and normally one family it's it's like it's a big family it's not one or two people in the family normally they have uh, a lot of kids normally uh it's like uh, five, six people in one house, one small house. So it's really hard to say to these people to stay home. And when you don't have support for the government and you don't have food, it's really hard. So... Of course. Um, it's hard here. It's like uh, many people of the favela is... Um, died or you know already um had covid 19 um <clears throat> so and now the situation is really serious because now the people uh really 
don't care, you know, like really, it's like, it's something that's far for them. It's like, oh, this is not happened with me, you know, and yeah. And a lot also need to work, need to go to work because, you know, you don't have support. Yeah, of course. Like you can't just expect someone to yeah. stay in and they're not and I guess they're not getting any benefits from the government. Yeah. No, the they're not government not getting any money from the government. The for government free. um uh made some project to give money uh for for these people that uh is not working or um it's mother and is alone and don't have no money, you know, have no money to pay it back. to pay. Yeah. So, but this yeah. money is really, <laughs> is really, it's really small because <clears throat> Rio de Janeiro is really expensive. You know, how you pay yeah, your yeah. your apartment, how you will buy food, how you drink, you buy water because the water here is also not good. So you need to buy. You cannot only drink uh, from your house because it's, it's dirty. So you need to buy yeah, water not clean also. Pipes. Yeah. And I guess, uh, Rio, you guys um, rely a lot on the tourism and there's no tourism. Yeah. yeah. I remember people, a lot of people selling things on the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The coconuts, the coconut water. I miss that coconut water. That was yeah. great. Now the the business is not is not good. Yeah. The empanadas. Yeah. All of so, these things can't. People can't make a living. Yeah. It's really hard. It's really hard. It must um, be hard. It must be hard. So. Yeah, but I see. I see you've done. Them. Um, I see you have been um helping, helping the community. I've seen yeah. on your Instagram you've been helping the community. Yeah. Tell the people a bit about that, like how you've been helping the community, the name of um, the company and what you've yeah, been I make, doing. I make part of um, of a project, project called the Rosinha Resist, and for. A, since March, we we are um, racing. We are raising uh, money from the the people that you know have money to buy food for these people that is not receive um, is receive nothing. You know, for the government is not working. Yeah. So there's there are a lot of people here that is. Uh, they are hungry, you know, and family and kids. So, um, we are talking about to um, uh, raise this uh, money to uh, give it food for these people. So, since March, this yeah. uh, this action worked for three months, and uh, since March, we're giving um, this basic like food for them you know we buy this basic uh package yeah. to give to them to eat so we had and um uh about 80 volunteer was a big thing and oh 80 Favela, yeah 80 volunteer 80 okay that's that's a, and it's all voluntary work volunteer work yeah so they okay. they they help us to um bring this uh, have a pocket to them house so the house from this family and we had the helping for the um social assistant here that um we call ACS these people these people work in this in the clinic in inside um of okay. Hosinger. What cleaning so, inside people's houses? Yeah, so they go they goes to uh 
uh, to this house from the people and helping and see if they are sick and if they need helping, you know, yeah. about healthy. So they uh, know, they know uh, which house we could, um, we could go. So okay, they that's help interesting, us. man. That's good. Yeah, they help us to to make. Oh, sorry. They help us to make a a list. Okay, so with the um, when you are, say, helping the people, are you wearing like uh, protection, protective gear, like masks or gloves and these things? Yes, yes. You gave that. We gave you that. Uh, masks, alcohol, and uh, for woman, um, this agent healthy, you know. Was this um company uh working before the COVID nineteen, or is it only since COVID nineteen happened? Um, we worked before, but it's only was only to meeting and see what we can do for the Hussi, you know. We always say, yeah, we always say that it's, yeah. Like in general before. Us for us. So we need to do something inside the, the favela, you know, the Hossinha, because people need help. So we, after we, we made some uh, meeting, seminar uh, uh, talking about literature or so talking about woman black woman and uh how the society uh you know how works with the society you know if uh they they need help if they uh have help so we first we just met in the first moment and after um the president of this of this project as uh, my friend Magda Gomi she she taught she thought about how can I help them you know because everything was a mess up we didn't know what would happened and was scared yeah so she talking about that and we just keep in doing and searching for help so yeah work it okay and so with um with this uh is it la resist la resist a his issue have they are they on a social media platform yeah. are they on instagram yeah, only we, or are they on are other in the instagram Platform. Soon we will have a website, but yeah. now only Instagram and Facebook. Ahosinha Hezishi. And um, the last okay. action. Because I'll put the links. I'll put the links on the video uh, nice. behind, below the video. So people can look and uh, donate money towards a good cause. People helping less fortunate people and people in poverty in the favela and i remember the so the are you studying at the moment uh now my university is closed but i hope uh next month i can i can start we will uh yeah. back to the class we will be a um, remote class so yeah now it's um is it new for us my the university that i studied never did this before it's a really important and public university in rio de janeiro so they never did what did before. you learn uh, okay did you learn how to speak english in uh in university no <laughs> i where did you learn to speak english where um with friends, with foreign friends, and in UK also, I lived oh, there okay, okay. for five months. Because um, the universe, the university situation is very, 
It's very, it's quite sad to be honest, because the teachers have been on strike. How long have the teachers been on strike um, at your university? Um, in this, uh, this pandemic. Uh, before COVID. Before COVID, yeah, the the public university in Brazil is always. A hard situation. It's always strike, isn't it? Yeah, because normally it's because the government don't give money for the university. So uh, the worker them or the teacher or the people that work there in general, they don't receive money sometimes. <laughs> it's like three or four months. Yeah. So. Um, Crazy. Yeah. So they need to stop because no one can work without money. So they need to pay the um, the transport and everything and paper and everything. So they cannot go like without money. So many. So times, would you say the longest time was like three to four months? Not actually. With no university. Um. The the longer strike was almost a year. I was like one could... whole year with no university. Yes, almost one year wow. because the government didn't want to pay the teachers and the work of them. They always say they and don't have money, but that's no. crazy. And yeah. then, how do you feel? About the president catching COVID nineteen, are you upset? Yes, <laughs> I'm really You're upset. upset. He has COVID. Yes, I'm really upset because um, I think the world knows now uh, this president that for me is not a president. So yeah, uh, I think the world knows now. He's really, um, it's really, I think it's really mean, you know, it's really corruption. Corruption, corruption. right? Corruption. Yeah. And. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not happy with him, with his, he, he did nothing, just, just say the people that COVID-19 is nothing. So yeah. and now, or uh, yeah, or uh, um, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand yeah. um people died in Brazil. So this is that's that's a lot. Of, this is lot. massive, and he cannot talk. And that's not, it's not serious. You know. Yeah and yeah it's a serious thing something when people are dying no matter if anyone wants to say it's a conspiracy or people want to say it's not real people are dying of something that is out there yeah so that's just a fact yeah and you just got to do anything and everything you can in your power to you know stop yourself from transmitting whatever's out there because there is something in the air there is something taking people down, man, and it's and it's a sad thing. Yeah. So, but um, on a positive note, have you been speaking with your family and friends during COVID using Zoom or WhatsApp video calls and trying to keep your spirits high? Yeah, yeah. We normally um um we normally call and have this uh, video. Um, call, you know, we're talking almost every day and with friends and... That's good. Yeah. So... You've been doing exercise? <laughs> At home, home exercises? Um, yes, a little bit. <laughs> a lot of Just yoga bit. and meditation. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> because, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> keep a mental health, keep your mental health in high yeah. vibration yeah <laughs> this is more okay. important so yeah i need to do that and i have 
you know, I have a nephew that live with me, so I need a lot of patience yeah. and know what can I do with him. Uh, and for kids, it's really yeah. hard because you know they they have a lot of energy. So okay, it's only uh, trying to keep my mind healthy and you know positive things. Yeah, man, you have to stay positive in these times and try and keep your friends and family that are maybe going through like a down stage during this time, just trying to give them the hope and yeah. try and give them the inspiration that things will get better one day. Yeah, will be. Things will get better very soon. <laughs> I hope. I don't know Europe, yeah, but in Brazil is really... It's a little forward. bit far, this reality, but... Say again? I don't know in Europe, but in Brazil, it's this thing is a little bit far because we don't have people that um, uh, make something to be better. You know, we don't have um, a good. Pre we don't have a president actually. We don't have yeah. people in the government that want help. Us. So for us, it's really far. We think that will be better, yeah. but we still. Um, think that you know we hope we have hope. It's like you're just looking after yourselves. Like in the favela, it's like it's you're alone. Like yeah, as a community, yeah, 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 yeah. We all alone. yeah. I understand this. It's harsh times. Yeah, and it's even it's even scarier because I was reading about the um. I was reading about the life expectancy in the favelas. Mm -hmm. It's approximately 48 years old. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And that was before COVID-19. Yeah. So that's, that's a sad statistic still. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we need some basic things, you know, just we just need water, you know, a good water. Or, you just need water. Yeah, we need. Uh, it's the basics of survival. Yeah, we just need the basic, and you know, and in Brazil we yeah, need. Yeah, I, I think things will change though. I hope so. Things have to change. Yeah. Things have to get better. Yeah, I hope so. Things have to get better. Mm hmm. Okay then, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for talking to me on the Big Talk podcast. I'm sure people will like this because, like I said, Brazil is a place you see mm -hmm. through the media. Not a lot of people go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people just want to and they have it on their bucket list, mm -hmm. but they don't actually go. So yeah, yeah. hopefully people can hear this and just think, oh, okay, you never know, you might just go. Yeah, yeah. Just to see what we're talking about and check if it's real. Yeah, I know a little bit what is real reality of Brazil, maybe. Yeah. It's good to think. Cause Bra yeah, because Brazil has a lot of beauty, man. It's a very beautiful place. Yeah, like, yeah. The scenery, yeah. the food. Yeah, we we it's, it's really beautiful amazing. Brazil. For me it's like if ev I think every if everything works, so not everything, but if we had we had um good intention to make better in yeah. Brazil would be like wonderful place, you know. It's really beautiful. Yeah. I love to live in Rio de Janeiro. It's like I can go by walk for fifteen minutes. Uh, to the beach, you know, I can stay there and relaxed and, you know, so, yeah. and have fresh food and good food, you know, I, I'm really luck, but things I need do. to change. I love, yeah, I love Rio, but Bahia, <laughs> I have to say is, 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 is a very good competitor. Yeah, it, I never I think... have been there, but soon. Yeah, soon you need to I go. Will. It's yeah. amazing. Soon I will, and I can tell that. But it's amazing. But I love the culture. I love um, how words yes. there and music I love the and culture. food, people. 
So um I think I will I will love that place. Sure. Yeah man, you should. Okay then. Is there any um anything you wanna say or anything that you wanna plug in? Any um apart from the resistance? So now just uh remember people that the Instagram is Aha Singa Hizishi. So mm -hmm. we'll be there in the on the video so they can go there and see a little bit the last um the last two weeks we had um um lives talking about the the black woman uh the Latin black black yeah. woman so it's really uh interesting so i think it's good to open yeah, yeah. the mind and see more things you know so and say okay, thank cool. you to listen and um uh, it's like i think it's opportunity to people here you know and see the other side <laughs> okay cool perfect yeah. Alright then, thanks for talking. Stay tuned and I'm sure we'll talk again soon.